I made a video on September 20th, 2021 titled, A Look Into the Most Underrated Player in the NBA, Two Points, Brandon Ingram. And to this day, I still believe this. Brandon Ingram never really gets talked about amongst his peers because his team has never really won anything, which really is not his fault. He's had to go through a lot of stuff. If you really paid attention to it. He had to go through playing with LeBron. LeBron missed half of the season, so they kind of fell down, and they, they didn't get to win anything. Um, for the first two years on the Pelicans jersey, they held him back. The Pelicans off front office held the whole young core back, trading Drew Holiday for Eric Bledsoe, just doing a bunch of dumb stuff that held them back. And then this year, we got the whole Zion situation. But now that he's on a big stage, a lot of people are seeing what I've been seeing for the longest time. They're seeing that this kid is a superstar player. And I hate saying kid because he's older than me. But he's a young guy in the NBA. And he's a superstar player. The playing for me was very hard. Because I'm a beat Brandon Ingram stand. I'm an Anthony Edwards fanatic. And Paul George is one of my favorite players of all time. But the way it played out couldn't have been more perfect. Paul George has had all the moments in his career that he's had, man. To me, he's a Hall of Famer. So I didn't really feel like he needed to play in this, man. The Celtics, I mean, the Clippers weren't um, healthy at all anyway. So there was no point in him playing this. For Brandon Ingram and Anthony Edwards to get the moments that they're having on the big stage where everybody is watching is something that I could have dreamed of, bro. Because these are two players that I've been talking about for the longest time that really don't get talked about on the national media at all. Even on NBA Twitter, not a lot of people talk about them unless they're fans of the Pelicans or the Timberwolves. But now that he's finally winning games, He's finally getting talked about, and I just, I love it, bro. I love it because he's deserved this. But back to Brandon Ingram. I told you guys, he's one of the best basketball players in the world. A lot of people look at him and just see a score, but to me, Brandon Ingram is an all-around elite talent. He showed it last night on national television and gets the best team in the league. Of course, they had to deal with the whole Devin Booker injury with Suck, because he's also one of my guys, but he helped his team Still one game in Phoenix and completely dominated any matchup in front of him. The matchups that were in front of him. The person that finished second in the defensive player of the year race in Mikael Bridges. And the person that finished third in the sixth man of the year race in Cam Johnson. And then Jay Crowder who's also a quality defender himself. And you know what? I haven't, I haven't done a breakdown video in probably a month and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down the film from last night's game. So let's get straight into it. Right here, first play of the game. We got an obvious mismatch. Him on Chris Paul. They decided to switch a lot the um Suns yesterday, which was kind of confusing to me. Um I Mikel Bridges makes a lot of the defenders look good. I mean, a lot of the players on this team look good as far as the defensive side. They play great team defense, but Mikel Bridges guarding the best player of the team, which it, to me makes their defense way better. And for them to switch a lot yesterday was kind of confusing, but we get the switch on Chris Paul. Chris Paul loves to swipe down. You see, he tried to do it there. That's why B.I. pump fake, and then he just rolls over him. You can't block that shot. The dude is 6'9". To me, I think he's 7 foot, but you know how the whole NBA um, height thing is. I think they... Crunch down on that to like they say KD is 6'9. We all know he's seven foot and KD and Burning are the same size. And then as far as wingspan, you just you're not there. <laughs> he doesn't see you at all. You're just not there. Now, right here, this next play. This is why I said a lot of people look at Brandon Ingram as a straight score. They don't understand that this dude is a legit 6'10 guard. He can do anything you ask him to do on the court. Right here. He's gonna draw the double team. On DeAndre Ayton. DeAndre Ayton has to step up because it's Brandon Ingram. <laughs> he's going to friend this over D-Book. He's tried to finish. He's tried to step up. That's an easy dump off pass. To Jonas Valanciunas is under the rim. And he's not going to miss that. Even though he was missing a lot in the first game. But he's not going to miss that. That's just great. You're drawing the double team. And he's long enough, pause, and big enough to make that pass over a 7-foot-1 DeAndre Ayton. And over D-Book. Makes that. Play. That was a crazy stutter. No. Now, right here. Great defense from CJ McCollum. He leaks out. One on one with Mikel Bridges. One of the best defenders in the league. Two long pause guys in the league. And look how he finishes right over him. Like he's not there. Finishing right over you. And that's an N1 too. He's just super talented, man. It's, when he's going, it's pretty unstoppable. If we being honest. It's pretty unstoppable. Now look, again. All the attention he's going to draw. D-Book, he has to come down. 
campaigning. Now he's playing under the rim. For some reason, that's terrible defense. But he's playing under the rim. You got him on him. You got him trying to chase him. Normal person probably made that pass to here. But B.I. being seven foot with a long wingspan, he can see over the defense. And this is what makes a passer a passer the ability to see over the defense. Herb Jones is chilling in the corner. Imagine that this is a shooter. But Herb Jones still hits a shot. So it's great. Beautiful bullet pass over there. He's going to shoot over him. Bucket. Bucket. He's a 6'10 guard. A 6'10 guard. You can do anything you ask him to do on the court. That's a beautiful pass. A beautiful pass. He, he has a multi-dimension game. What I mean by that is get it from the three. He can get it from the post. Get it in the paint. He can finish around the rim. He can spot up. He can do anything you ask him to do on the court. Spot up, shoot. Right over Devin Booker. Good closeout by Devin Booker. But like I said, the wingspan is just, you're not there. I really don't see you sometimes. That's just how it seems, bro. He's going to shoot over you. Same thing with KD. And the crazy thing is, and this might sound crazy, same thing with Kyrie. I just see Kyrie do some crazy shit. When he's six foot one, probably, and he just shoots over people like they're not there, too. Those are the only three people I see shoot over people like they're just not there. But great shot. Bernie Ingram, he was dealing with an ankle injury in this game, too. But nobody really talked about that. He twisted his ankle yesterday, but was still handing out free buckets. But let's get into this. Again, he's a great team defender. He has a, like I say, he's multidimensional. Gets the stop on Mikael Bridges. Good steal. Look at his pass. Jackson Hayes, man, he had an amazing game yesterday. He leaked a lot of times yesterday, and this is one thing. People talking about Jackson Hayes is the center. I don't know why he's playing the four. Jackson Hayes is not a center. He, he can't rebound, but he's just an athletic dude, and if they tap into his potential, which they've been doing because, like I said, Jackson Hayes has improved a lot this year. He's starting in a playoff game. Like, dude has improved a lot. But, look, he leaks out. Look at this outlet pass. Put it right in front of him where he needed to be. And Jackson Hayes being an uber-athletic guy, he is. That's his... That's crazy as a seven footer, but he's fast as hell. Seven foot, get out. I'm gonna find you. Beautiful pass by Brandon Ingram. Now, right here, 258. Look at this alley hoop off the pick and roll. They ran this play like three times. They ran it three times in a row with CJ in the fourth quarter. But this is what Brandon Ingram as the point guard coming up. Pick him. JaVale, probably the worst defense I've ever seen you play. Look at the pass. Again, the ability to see over the defense is just it's something you really can't teach. You can't teach that. You got to have the stature of B.I. You got to be 6'9 to see over the defense to make this pass on the run midair to a person that's at the free throw line at best. Like, that's that's a crazy pass, bro. And Larry Ness, man, shout out to him, bro. I think he's found a home, man. That suck is not in Cleveland, but I think he's found a home. Hold on. I have to check if I'm recording because why do I feel like I'm not? Okay, I am. <laughs> Bro, it happened to me too many times while I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. Okay, now next, we got one right here. Great defense by Cam, like I said. It's just, you're not there, bro. I hate that I have to keep saying it, but I'm going to keep saying it. You're just not there. And if you look at the stats, by the way, Brandon Ingram is a top three member of scorer in the league. Not a lot of people want to talk about that, but we, we, we can talk about that. Great defense. It's just, you know what I'm saying? You're not there. And this is a clutch bucket because they was building a little bit of momentum at that time. I believe, look, let me, yep, I, yep. This is the play, before this play, Lindsey Sherman, he ducked on um, Herb Jones. It was like a little, little, little dunk. It wasn't nothing big. But right before then, that play happened. That was going in. That's why I put it in this highlight. Like, that was really going in. Um, I don't know what DeAndre Aiden was thinking. But, yep, thank you. That's free bucket because <laughs> that was definitely going in. Now, right here. The ability to get two feet in the paint is something they teach you first when you're starting to learn how to um, be a playmaker and stuff. So he gets two feet in the paint. He makes every, but he makes the whole defense collapse. Mikael Bridges, he's on him. He's on him. He's on him. Chris Paul, he's on him because he know that's it. Landry Shamit, that's a little boy. To Brandon Ingram, you got a shooter in the corner, making all of the defense collapse. Leaves Jose Alvarado wide open and he held it the perfect amount of time. He makes sure he got deep into the paint, so he had to collapse all the way down. He has to commit all the way down instead of him committing out here where he was at. Cameron, Cameron Johnson was, at first, he was right here. He didn't commit all the way. Now he has to commit all the way. Now Jose Alvarado is wide open. That's his beautiful playmaking from a 6'10 guard. That's beautiful, bro. Amazing playmaking. Now right here, like I said, clutch buckets. He can do it all. He can do it all. This is a clutch buckets. I believe Chris Paul hit a three right before this. Wide open. I can spot up too. 
great contest again. Just not there. <laughs> You're just not there, bud. What did Kevin Durant say? You're petite. You're not there, buddy. Now, right here. Lay in the shot clock. What does he do? Do the legs, pull up jumper over Jay Crowder. I don't understand how he did this. He made it look so effortless. But this is crazy. Boom. Pull up. Amazing defense. Amazing defense because he didn't foul. I don't know if that. I wonder why they didn't take that back. Because why does it look like he's feeling on the line? But look. That's amazing closeout. It's just the release is up here. You're not blocking that shit. <laughs> You're not blocking that, buddy. That's just, that's a tough bucket, bro. That is a tough clutch crush time bucket. And look at this. This is against the number one team in the league on the playoffs. I'm so happy my boy finally get this moment, man. I'm so happy because he's better than a lot of motherfuckers y'all put over him. I swear to you, he is. Right here, like I said, great closeout. Got his position. One of the best players that get into his spots. The fadeaway off the pass is crazy crazy off the pass i'm not even gonna take a dribble i'm just gonna raise up again i'm showing you all these highlights can you show me a highlight where it has it wasn't bad it wasn't good defense it's all been good defense you just you're not you don't matter <laughs> i'm shooting over you anytime i want bro that's just something you can't teach bro that's beautiful i love this pelican scene because for them to be so young they have championship dna they never feel like they're too down and they play like a veteran team for them to be so young they play Three rookies at one time yesterday against the best team in the league. And it never felt like they was out of place. And that's just a big part of Brandon Ingram's leadership, Willie Green's leadership, and CJ McCollum, a vet who's been there in those moments. That's a big part of his leadership, too. That's just a couple great moments that I just, I love seeing from this team that they're actually in this series. Um, with D-Book being injured, it sucks. Like I said, I'm a B.I. guy. But I believe Brandon Ingram can lead this team over this Suns team if B.I. is not out. If B.I. is out, that's what I meant to say. If Brandon Ingram is out, not Brandon Ingram, if Devin Booker is out, I believe Brandon Ingram can lead this Pelicans team over the Suns. That first game was kind of iffy because, like, bro, they just played two days ago. They're a young team, so they're going to get punched in the mouth. But then yesterday, they came out like they belong. And this team looks like they can beat the fully healthy Suns team. They have the recipe to do it. DeAndre Ayton, he sometimes he doesn't look there. Jonas Valanciunas, even though that first game he played terrible as far as getting the shots to go in the rim, but the dude had 20 rebounds dominating DeAndre Ayton. He's been doing that all series. I believe Brandon Ingram can lead this Pelicans team over the Suns team. And I hear a lot of people saying, man, I can't wait for Zion to come back. Man, man fuck that. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing that. They are great now. They don't need, they, okay, I would love to see them have Zion, but they don't need, bro, bro. It don't even like he want to play with this team. You keep hearing all these rumors that he don't want to play with this team. Just wait for next year to that shit. This team is a great team now. And even next year, I'm sorry to tell people, Brandon Ingram is their best player when Zion's on the court, even when he's off the court. When he's on, he, he's the best player. I don't care what nobody says, he's the best player on the court. And for him to be the starting piece of a rebuild, and then you have Zion as the number two. Yes, I just said that. Man, this Pelican team, their future is scary. Their future is scary. Um, shout out to them for proving me wrong. They turned Jackson Hayes into a really good quality NBA player. Like, good, good pass, Jackson. I'm, I'm going to rewind that back. Good pass, Jackson. Some stuff he just wasn't doing back in the day. Now he's doing it. That was a good pass. If that was a shooter, that's going up. That's Garrett Temple. But other than that, man, love the team. Love B.I. Finally, I'm happy he's finally getting these moments. Um... I was going to do a Jordan Poole video today, but my boy went crazy, so I had to do a Brent Angle video. But other than that, man, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace out, bro.